Drew Holiday has signed a new four-year, $135 million contract with the Boston Celtics. And this is a big deal for a couple of different reasons. This is one of the biggest contracts ever given to a player as old as Drew Holiday is. And it's really important, of course, for the future of the Celtics. Now, this was a big storyline, uh, not only in the offseason when they acquired Drew Holiday, but also during the season. Drew Holiday was going to be a free agent in 2024. He had a player option that he was going to decline. And it was always kind of a question mark for Boston in terms of what they were going to be willing to spend to bring him back, what the team was going to look like adding him. And of course, they have been unbelievable during the regular season. They are the favorite to win the NBA title. And presumably, if they were able to continue to bring him and the other guys back, they would be able to create a multi-year title window, which obviously is the reason for re-signing him. However, I do think there were a lot of people that looked at this number specifically, looked at the length of the contract and wondered what exactly the plan is here for Boston. Now, as part of the contract, Holiday turned down the player option for this upcoming offseason. So it's this year and then four more seasons added on to Drew Holiday's contract. So it's not like he picked up the player option and then added four years. So it's this year and then four more years. And just to reference what I mentioned in the intro in terms of the amount of money for a player as old as Drew Holiday, in terms of players that are 33 or older, this is only the fourth time that a player of that age has signed a 100 plus million dollar guaranteed contract the other three times were lebron steph and then al horford randomly but like it's it, it is not typical for players of the age of drew holiday to be getting a deal this massive now of course he's been unbelievably important for boston and the ability for them to put their five best players on the floor together has been a big reason why they've been as good as they have this year and without the drew holiday trade the celtics still would have been very good but he has certainly been an unbelievable addition for them now in terms of the contract itself one of the kind of minute details here is that um, because of the way the structure of the contract worked, this actually gives Boston a little bit more flexibility going into next season uh, to go ahead and have him on that number, not deal with the player option. Um, it just makes things a little bit easier underneath the, the second apron and the first apron as well. Um, but then you also have to think about the overall expense of the roster. I think that's kind of the added context to this extension is Jalen Brown's making 50 plus. Uh, Jason Tatum needs a new contract the following offseason. Derek White uh, needs a new contract the following offseason as well. So what Boston is looking at here, and this is why this was a big question mark in terms of what they were going to be willing to pay Drew Holiday is, presumably, Derek White's new contract is going to be similar to what Drew Holiday just got. So they're going to be looking at paying Kristaps Porzingis $30 plus million, Drew Holiday $30 plus million, Derek White, $30 plus million, Jalen Brown, over 50 a year. And then Jason Tatum needs a new contract as well. And he's also going to be making over 50 a year. So on an annual basis for their starting lineup for the next two seasons, they're going to be paying $190 million per season for just five players. Now, that's not completely unprecedented. The Warriors have done this already when they re-signed Jordan Poole and they re-signed Andrew Wiggins the year after they won the title. They had Steph, Clay, Draymond, Wiggins, and Poole. All those guys were making a ton of money. But also keep in mind that only lasted one season and they dumped Jordan Poole in the off season uh, in exchange for Chris Paul's expiring contract, essentially. And that contract obviously has not worked out well at all for Washington either. So there is some precedent for this, for a team spending 30 plus million dollars on every single player in their starting lineup and two different guys making 50 plus. But it's clear the level of investment that the Celtics were willing to go to to create this title window. Now, there's a couple of interesting things to keep an eye on here because as I mentioned, uh, Derek White and Jason Tatum both are going to need new contracts in 2025. Um, I would expect both of them to sign extensions um, kind of in a similar structure to what Holiday did, at least for White in terms of the amount. And then uh, for Tatum, I expect it to be like, I'll turn down my player option. And he'll sign a, a super huge match that's probably going to be $60 million a year annually. Um, and what that creates basically is like a three-year title window, this year and two more years, of guaranteeing that they're going to have these five guys on the roster. I would be very surprised if they end up keeping all these players on the roster for the entirety of their contracts. And by the time the last two years of the Drew Holiday contract comes up, I wouldn't be shocked if they were looking at options to try and dump that number and try and save some money because it is going to be prohibitively expensive here very, very soon. But to be able to guarantee a three-year title window, including this season, is not an easy thing to do, and they absolutely have been able to do that. The other interesting part of this as well is that Kristaps Porzingis' contract only has two more seasons left on it. They signed him to an extension in the offseason as well. So that's what I'm saying with this kind of three-year window here where they have Holiday, uh, Brown Tatum, and Kristaps Porzingis and Derek White 
all these guys will be making a ton of money. They know that they're going to be making a ton of money for this year and two more. And then at that point, whether it be letting KP walk because of potential injury stuff or trading away Holiday, at that point, they can start to get some relief on some of these huge salary numbers. But again, it's just interesting how willing Boston has been willing to invest in this group because really the only precedent we have for this is those Warriors teams that I mentioned earlier. Now, just to be clear, this is a good decision for Boston, right? Like the, the concept of just letting Drew Holiday walk in the offseason and losing an important piece on a team that's winning 60-something games, that doesn't make any sense regardless of the cost. And it is important to make sure that you recognize that you have a championship window and hopefully have ownership that is willing to pay a ton of money to put together a championship team. And all of this is very good, but it's just interesting to think about the potential long-term sustainability of the group that they put together from an expense standpoint. But the goal of, of building an NBA team of putting together a good roster is to win the title. Like in two years, if Boston isn't as good because they've got these big contracts and they were able to win a title this year or the following, they're not really gonna be bothered by the fact that in two years, they're not as good as they would have been if they had let Drew Holiday walk and then maybe done some other stuff with that money. These kinds of decisions come down to timing. They come down to whether you think it's worth it. And it's clear that Boston has the ability to win the title this year and in the two years following, assuming that they are healthy. And that's really all this contract comes down to. You can talk about the expense of the roster. You can talk about how it changes what they can do in the off season and into the following season. But at the end of the day, you have a chance to win the title and the Celtics are, are certainly going all in to make it happen. Now, as always with these big contracts, there's one thing that can kind of make the whole thing come crashing down um, and it's injury stuff. I mean, anytime that you are, you Know, investing this much in a guy in holiday that's 33 plus years old um, and then also of course you're constantly concerned about potential injury stuff with Kristaps Porzingis um, once you start having money on the books that's just not producing for you at all because they're not healthy things start to get very very concerning and so there is a world in which whether it be this postseason or next year or the following where the roster itself looks good but it's very expensive and they're just not getting production out of holiday or or, or Porzingis because those guys just aren't healthy. I still think it's worth the risk, absolutely. And again, the alternative here is just, it's not like they're creating cap space by letting Drew Holiday walk. The alternative here is you're just losing one of your best players uh, because you're trying to save money on the luxury tax or whatever it may be. So basically what I'm saying is, Boston has put together a three-year title window and that is awesome. And I'm very intrigued to see how things go in the postseason for them. They're gonna be the favorites to represent the East. Um, if that doesn't go well, there could be some changes potentially with the coaching situation. I would not be surprised by that. Um, if they, you know, let's say they lose in the second round or something and then once we get two years down the road i would be surprised if this entire starting five is on the team i think obviously tatum is going to get a max extension i think they're going to resign Derek white as well all that's fine but whether it be potentially moving on from jalen brown because that's another just gigantic number uh whether it be letting chris taps his walk whether it be potentially looking at trading drew holiday the celtics have this year and they have two more years and that's awesome but this isn't necessarily a guarantee in fact i would be very surprised if all these guys are still on the roster um, and what would that be, 2026, 2027, something like that. Uh, very, very cool, very interesting. We don't get a lot of like random mid-season extensions like this. Um, and I, I certainly think it's a good idea for Boston, despite what at first seems like a very, very big number for Drew Holland.